So we will begin with reviewing what we have been uh, talking about in this lecture 22. <coughs> so we started the, uh, uh, you know, we, what we want to do is to sum up all that has been discussed till now. <coughs> and if you look at the existence as a whole, what we see is that existence is in the form of coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. And if we look at this, units, they are limited in size, but if you look at the space, it is unlimited, it is all pervading, and we have talked about it quite in detail. Similarly, if you look at the unit, they are active. You can identify them as activities. But if you look at the space, it is no activity. <clears throat> and all activities are taking place in this no activity. And finally, we said that if you look at this coexistence, this unit submerged in space, what we see is that these units are energized in space. They are self-organized in space and they are recognizing their relationship with other units and fulfilling that relationship in space. So this is something which is there. This is something which is given. Something which we have to understand. Right? Not that something we have to make or construct. It is there. <coughs> it is given. And in fact, everything that we see in nature is an expression of this coexistence. Expression of this coexistence, which is ever present. So what we were talking about yesterday, you know, is that <clears throat> all so much of variety that we see in nature, you know, the variety of units that we see in nature, either in the form of material units or in the form of consciousness unit, or in the form of these four orders that we see in nature. All this is an expression of this basic coexistence which is ever present. Coexistence of the activity, the subtle most activity in no activity. Coexistence of this unit submerged in space. <clears throat> and we also said that all that we see as, you know, gross units and as subtle units and the subtle most activity. They are existing together. It is not that the subtle most activity, which is, you know, at the base of all that we see is so much of converted into the grosser activity. The subtle most activity is always at the base of anything that we see, which is grosser than this. So all that is existing together, all of them are coexisting. And therefore, if we develop our competence of working at higher and higher level of activities, we can see them all together, together taking place. <clears throat> so in essence, this is what this whole, whole, whole existence is. So the whole existence is in the form of coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. And starting from the subtle most activity in this no activity, we have all the grosser and grosser activities and we have so much of variety in nature. <clears throat> so this is the essence. This is the essence of this whole existence. So this is what we have been talking about. And if we look at this essence and then try to expand on this, then we can see, can we go back gradually to yes. So when we look at this essence of existence being as coexistence as being units submerged in space, we can see the expression of this coexistence in the form of this material unit and the consciousness unit that we talked about. And further, we can see it in terms of expansion. You know, 
or expression in terms of physical order, bio order, animal order, and human order. And if we expand on this physical order and the bio order further, you can see all this you know, starting from atoms to molecules to molecular structures to lump and to fluid. And also in the area of bio order, we have the cells and plants and trees and animal body in the human body. And this animal body and the self coexisting with this animal body is what we see as animal order. And the self coexisting with human body is what we see as human order. And we can see that all this unfolding of coexistence, of submergence of units in space is taking place by its own process. <clears throat> So by its own unfolding in the process of the coexistence, and we don't have to do anything for it. Right? It is all there, it is all taking place. And in fact, we as human beings are there as unfolding of this process. So if you can see now that we have not done anything for us to be there. Right? We have not done anything for this self to be there. It is there by virtue of this expression of coexistence. We have not done anything for the body to be there. It is there by virtue of this expression of the coexistence. And we have not done anything for the coexistence of self and body to be there. It is all there by virtue of this coexistence. So this much of unfolding has already taken place by virtue of this coexistence, by virtue of this emergence in space. And now that we are there, we have something to do. Now that we are there, we have something to do. And now if you look at what we have to do in the context of this whole existence as coexistence and its expression, is that we have to understand this coexistence and we have to live in this coexistence. So this is what we have to do as a human being in this process of unfolding of the coexistence. So two things that we have to do. Number one, we have to understand this coexistence. We have to realize this coexistence. And we have to live with this coexistence. And if you look at living with this coexistence, what is of importance is having this right feeling and right thought. That is, having this feeling and thought of coexistence. So this is what I have to do as a human being. This is what every human being has to do in this process of unfolding of coexistence. And if I do that, then this process of unfolding of coexistence can be completed. This process of unfolding of coexistence can be completed. So if you can see all this aloe, you know, area, this is already in harmony. This process of unfolding is already, you know, going on. But if you look at this violet area, below this human order, this is what we have to complete. So this is the only part that is remaining, right? And if you look at what we have to do, the major part of it is to be done at the level of self, in terms of right understanding, which is understanding of coexistence, in terms of right feeling and right thought, which is essentially the feeling and thought of coexistence. So this is what we have to do. And that is where the development has to take place. The remaining things, you know, are already in harmony. So we don't have to, you know, kind of develop them. Right? We only have to understand the development that has taken place in them already and, you know, learn to be with it or help this process in harmony. What we have to really work on is to work on our own self. And that working on our own self is essentially ensuring this right understanding and right feeling and right thought, which essentially means understanding the harmony, 
and having this feeling and thought of harmony. And if we do that, then this process of unfolding will be completed. So, can we move to the next slide, Rajulji? Which, uh, uh, no, can we uh, have that slide which describes about the role of human being? Which, starting from realization of coexistence to authentication in terms of universal human order. Okay, we'll come to that. Uh, it will come in the sequence. So what we are saying is that what we have to do as human beings is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. And interestingly, now we can see that what we call as happiness or unhappiness in human being is basically an indicator. It is basically an indicator of the fact whether we have understood this coexistence or not, whether we are living in coexistence or not. Yeah, let's go back to the last slide. Yeah. So if you look at this, this happiness is an indicator, a feedback that we have to understand harmony and we are living in harmony. Right. So if we have understood the harmony and if we are living in harmony, we are in a state of harmony and a state of happiness within. On the other hand, this unhappiness is an indicator that somewhere we have not been able to understand this harmony. Okay? And we have not been able to live in harmony at one or more of these four levels of our being. And this is a reference to the fact that our role <coughs> in this existence is to make effort for this excellence, which is in terms of understanding the harmony and living in harmony right, at all levels of our being. And this is what we have been talking about all through. So if you look at the whole course on EHB, essentially we are trying to work on this you know, basic role of human being. The basic role is to understand the coexistence, understand the harmony, that is there in existence and to live in harmony that is there in this existence. So the basic role of human being therefore is to understand the harmony, the coexistence and live in harmony, live in coexistence. And our happiness and unhappiness is an indicator of the fact whether we have understood the harmony and living in harmony or not understood the harmony and not living in harmony. So in a sense, if we see the role of human being, yeah, next. Next, Rajmaji, can we move? Yeah. So in a sense, we can see that this existence is in the form of coexistence. Human being is by virtue of this coexistence and it is embedded in this coexistence. And therefore, all that human being needs to do is to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. And this, in a sense, would mean, <clears throat> number one, to understand the coexistence, which can be further expanded in terms of understanding the coexistence, which we call as knowledge, as realization, and then to ensure the feeling and thought of coexistence. And this is what we have been calling as resolution. The second part of it is to live in coexistence, which would mean to live in coexistence with human beings, starting from family to world family. This is what we have been calling as undivided society. And to live in coexistence in nature, from family order to world family order. And this is what we have been calling as universal human order. So this is the essence of what human being has to do in this existence. This is the essence of our role in this existence. And this is what we have been talking about all through, right? Understanding the coexistence, right? that is understanding the harmony at all levels of existence, all level of human existence, and to ensure the feeling and thought of coexistence. 
which is ensuring the feeling of harmony at all levels of our being and once we have this understanding of coexistence understanding of harmony we have the feeling and thought of coexistence feeling of harmony then we can live in harmony with the world around right which is in terms of living in harmony with the human being and living in harmony with the entire nature this living in harmony with the entire with the human being is what we are calling as behavior and living with the in harmony with the entire nature is what we are calling as participation in the larger order so this behavior ranges from family to world family and this participation in the larger order expands starting from family order to the world family order and if we do that it results into undivided society and universal human order <laughs> and this is what we aspire you know, we all aspire for this as human being on the one hand to have this knowledge and the resolution within right and by this we are in a state of harmony and happiness within in continuity and to have this undivided society and universal order universal human order in the world outside so this is what we want as a human being and this is what is our role in this whole existence so the very process of unfolding of you know this coexistence is what is in is what uh, demanding you know for us to complete this process and if you look at our own natural acceptance okay, this is what we have you know natural acceptance for to understand the harmony the coexistence to have this feeling and thought of harmony in the coexistence and to live in harmony to live in coexistence both with human being and with the entire nature so this is what we have to do as human being right? this is the program this is the role of human being in existence so with this we can see that if we can ensure these two things the result will be an undivided society and universal human order on earth in which harmony and peace are very natural outcome and there is every provision in existence for this so whatever we want to do ultimately right now we can see that there is all provision in this existence in fact this is the very process of unfolding of coexistence right so we don't have to do anything out of it right we have to do something in the process of it so the whole existence is in the form of coexistence and this coexistence is unfolding itself and it has unfolded itself up to the human order right and by its natural process it will be unfolding itself in the form of understanding of this coexistence having this feeling and thought of coexistence and living in coexistence with human being and with entire nature so this is what has to happen and this is what we want to do right, as human being so we have to be with this natural flow you know, this natural unfolding of coexistence and that's all we have to do right? we don't have to fight against the flow of the nature flow of the existence the coexistence right? but we have to be with it and to be with it we have to understand it so we have to understand this coexistence and once we have we understand the coexistence we have the feeling and thought of coexistence and with this feeling and thought of coexistence we can live in harmony in coexistence with human being with rest of nature and ultimately with the entire nature and the outcome of this is the knowledge the resolution the end by the society and the universal human order yes so if we look at this whole process then now we can see what is 
it that we have to do you know so if you look at ourselves the problem is that we are living with you know imagination which are based on either preconditioning or sensation and most of it might be against this coexistence against this harmony against this relationship so that is the trouble that is where we are see? so we have this deluded self where imaginations are on the basis of sensation and preconditioning so what we have to do is to develop this you know understanding of harmony this realization of coexistence and this contemplation of relationship so if you do that then now we have this b1 which is active so we have this realization of coexistence understanding of this harmony and contemplation of relationship and that is what is there at the base of this whole existence so once we have this you know and this all put together is what we are calling as right understanding so when we have this this becomes the guide for our desires for our feeling it becomes the guide for our thoughts our expectation if that happens then we have the feeling of coexistence harmony and relationship and we have the thought of this coexistence harmony and relationship and this is what ensures a state of harmony within and a state of continuous happiness within with this state of imagination which is guided by the realization of coexistence understanding of harmony and contemplation of relationship now we can ensure living in relationship with human being leading to mutual fulfillment we can work with rest of nature leading to mutual prosperity and we can participate in the larger order starting from family to world family order leading to fulfillment of universal human you know fulfillment of the human goal and this when we expand you know this relationship ultimately leads to undivided society and this fulfillment of human goals through participation in the larger order leads to universal human order so this is the total expense of my being my being in myself and my being in this world around me in this whole existence so if you look at this whole range of the human activity it starts with the realization of coexistence which is ever present and it is completed through the whole process into expression in terms of universal human order so this is the range of human activity this is what we have to do as human being right so whatever we do is ultimately founded on realization of this coexistence this harmony this relationship and it completes by my participating in this universal human order so the expression the realization within is in terms of realization of coexistence and expression outside is in terms of authenticating this universal human order so this is the range of human activity this is what we have to do as human being and if we do that we are in a state of harmony and happiness within and we are also in harmony and with the world outside it leading to the fulfillment of the nature as a whole of course other human being to include <clears throat> so this is the total range and if you place this total range of human activity into this picture of the whole existence that we have been talking about so everything up to the human order is already unfolded the human order is unfolding this coexistence in the form of realization of this coexistence and ultimately expressing it in terms of the universal human order 
So if you look at this whole picture now, what we can see is that this whole existence is in the form of coexistence, it is in the form of units submerged in space. And this coexistence is unfolding itself, right? and it has unfolded itself already in the form of these four orders. And this process of unfolding is completed through the human order by way of realizing this coexistence and by way of authenticating it in the form of universal human order. So the whole thing starts with the coexistence, which is ever present. And this expression completes itself in the form of universal human order. So if you look at this whole nature, the whole existence, this is what is happening, starting with the primordial, you know, what we were talking about, primordial activity you know, that day. Starting with this primordial, you know, uh, coexistence, that is existence of the subtle most activity in space, in all pervading space. Right. Starting from there, it is expressing itself in the form of grosser and grosser things. And ultimately, it is you know, expressing itself in the form of universal human order. So this is the total range of the expression of this existence as coexistence. And if you look at the human being, right, the role of human being is to participate in this process of unfolding by way of realizing this coexistence and by way of living according to this coexistence, resulting into universal human order. So the whole process of unfolding of coexistence into universal human order and the process of realization of coexistence in the self of human being and living up to this universal human order, they seem to be the same, right? Or they are the same. So what we have to do as human beings is what is the natural process of unfolding of this coexistence which is ever present. So this is the sense in which we were saying, you know, many times we have talked about this flowing with nature, flowing with existence, flowing with life. So we do not have to fight, we do not have to struggle, we do not have to oppose, right? We have to understand this flow. We have to understand this natural unfolding of this coexistence and we have to be with it. And if we can do this, we will be in a state of harmony and happiness right, in continuity. So this is what we have been saying many times when we were calling, you know, or quoting um, Lao Tzu when he says those who flow as life flows know that they need no other force. They feel no fear, they feel no tears, they need no mending, they need no repair. So this is the natural flow, right? This is the flow of life, this is the flow of this coexistence. This is the process of unfolding of this coexistence. When we understand this, we can flow with it. And when we are flowing with it, right, we don't need any other force. We don't need to struggle, we don't need to fight. Yes. We have to understand this flow and be with this flow. And then we will not need any mending, any repair because there is no damage. So all this damage that we face today, all this unhappiness that we face today is because of lack of understanding of this flow of nature, flow of existence this natural unfolding of this coexistence, starting from that basic primordial coexistence to universal human order. So this is what is, you know, if you look at the whole existence and if you look at the human being in this coexistence. So with this, now we can, uh, you know, see that ultimately, what we have to do, yeah, we go back to the next, to the previous one, yeah. 
So now we can see what we have been saying in the very first session, right? Where we were talking about this transformation. Right? We were talking about this transformation or talking about this development right? and the role of education. So we said that ultimately what we have to do is to ensure this personal transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. And societal transformation from inhuman society to human society. And we said that the role of education is to facilitate this process of transformation. To facilitate this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness, if you look at the individual human being, <coughs> and transformation from inhuman society to human society, if you look at the society as a whole. If you look at the society as a whole, if you look at the nature as a whole, if you look at the existence as a whole. So this is the basic transformation that is required, that is desirable. And the role of education is essentially to ensure this transformation, right, both at the level of individual and at the level of society. So at the level of individual, there is a transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness, or from deluded self to realized self. And at the level of society, we have this transformation from inhuman society to human society. And we have been talking about the details of all this all through this course. But this is the essence that if you look at from the perspective of what we have to do as human being today, and what is the role of education, right, we have to undergo this process of transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. And we have to transform this society from inhuman society to human society. And if we can do this, then the whole process of unfolding of coexistence will be completed. So this is how um, you know, um, things are, and this is what we have to do as human beings. So if you look at this human you know, uh, effort, and if you look at this human tradition, you know, the way it would look like is this, and this also we have been mentioning it, that it has to all start with this human education. I mean, what has to happen till human order is, has already happened. We don't have to do anything for it. But what has to happen, you know, through human being, through human tradition, is that we have to have this human education, an education that ensures the development of the competence to live with definite human conduct, with realization of coexistence, you know, understanding of coexistence and feeling and sort of coexistence. If we have this human education, then every child is able to live with human conduct the conduct that ensures the continuity of mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. So every child grows into this, you know, with this human education and is able to live with this human conduct which ensures happiness and prosperity for himself and for everything around. And if we have this human conduct and if we have people living with this human conduct, we will have this human constitution human constitution, which essentially describes about the nature of society of people living together in a relationship of mutual fulfillment. So if there are people living with human conduct, how the society would look like, the description is what is human con constitution. And when we realize this, you know, human constitution, we have this universal human order. So we'll have this universal human order. And in this universal human order, right, 
the right kind of education and sanskar the human education and sanskar will be available to every child so through this universal human order the human goal will be realized and as a part of this universal human order we will have the human education and sanskar in which every child is facilitated with you know this human education and where this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness can take place and this transformation from in human society to human society can take place so once this cycle is completed it can go on till this cycle is completed we have lot of effort to make and that is the idea of what we are trying to do we are trying to make an effort to work for this human education and sanskar right individually collectively and through the mainstream education to work for this universal human education and sanskar <coughs> so that we can have you know teachers and students you know the parents and children who have this human conduct right and who can think of this human constitution and who can actively participate in the realization of this universal human order so we have to set this cycle you know rolling and once it is set then it will go on so this is the purpose of what we are doing and this is what we have to do as human being so this human education is the entry point from where things can start so in that sense what we are doing is very important very necessary right very meaningful so this is the best we can do as human being right to set this cycle rolling yes <clears throat> so with this i'll just sum up what we have been talking about <clears throat> so we started all our discussion with this values right? and we said this value is an of an unit is its participation in the larger order so all those details that we talked about you know how we can see the value as participation in the larger order and if you look at this we can see you know that value of our activity ultimately is our participation right in harmony or the in the larger uh, kind of uh, system uh, that we are you know living in right so if you look at the activity of the self <coughs> the value of each of the activity of the self is ensuring harmony at the level of self it's so this activity of desire and thought and expectation and the activity of this realization understanding and contemplation the role of all these activities in the self is to ensure the harmony in the self so that is the participation of the activity of the self that we have talked about in detail if you look at this body for example you know, the value of your body is participation in your activities as a human being so to participate as a human being in terms of understanding the harmony and living in harmony this is the participation of the body the body facilitates the self in understanding the harmony and living in harmony so that is the value of body similarly if we look at the value in the family right it is our participation in ensuring the harmony in the family and that is why we have talked about this relationship and this feelings you know in us which will ensure 
mutual fulfillment in relationship so these feelings are the values you know, of human being in the family in relationship similarly the value in the society will be our participation in the harmony in the society the value in the nature will be our participation in harmony in the nature and our value in the existence will be our participation in this coexistence <clears throat> right so this is the values of human being starting from the self to the whole existence and this is something which is true for all human being right which is true for the whole existence so in that sense we are saying that these are the universal human values these are the universal human values so if you look at this universal human values this is what it means okay if you look at the existence it is in the form of coexistence so what we have to do as human being is to realize this potential okay in terms of realization of coexistence when we look at the nature we can see that this nature is in harmony the four orders are in a relationship of mutual fulfillment right. and we as human being have to understand this harmony understand this relationship if we look at the level of society right these are the four goals that we have been talking about in this society you know, human goal starting from right understanding and right feeling okay we have to have this prosperity and trust and coexistence so we have to realize this potential through participation of individuals and families in various societal systems and if we look at the family we have this feeling of coexistence which is expressed in terms of trust respect and so on ultimately in terms of love so we have this you know possibility and we have to realize this possibility of understanding this relationship understanding this feelings in the relationship to ensure this feelings in the self and live with this feelings in the relationship leading to mutual happiness when we look at the level of individual human being we have this coexistence of self and body so we have to understand this self we have to understand the body we have to understand the coexistence between the self and body and ultimately realize this self regulation is the responsibility towards the body by way of nurturing protecting and ensuring the right utilization of the body and when we come down still you know to the level of self then we can see this you know continuous happiness as the need which is expressed in terms of happiness peace satisfaction and bliss and this can be realized by ensuring right understanding and right feeling right? and right thought in the self so at all these levels we can see what is the reality you know what are we as human being there and what is our role there you know and what we have to do to fulfill that role so this is the essence of what we have been talking about all these days in this course starting from the first session where we said that we want to develop right we want to ensure a holistic development okay. and this is the holistic development you know if we can understand the whole existence this nature and see how it is unfolding itself right and where does it go ultimately if i can see this and i can be with this right and if the process of unfolding is completed that is the development and that development is to be completed through me as an individual you know as a self so to ensure this 
societal transformation or transformation of the whole nature, you know, the whole existence into that universal human order. I have to go through this process of transformation in the self. And that transformation in the self is transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness. The transformation in the self is moving from the deluded self to the realized self. So these are the descriptions of that transformation. And what we have to do at different levels of this nature, this existence. So with this, we can now talk about, you know, briefly about what is going to be our program of action. How do we go about this transformation? So broadly, it can be classified into two parts. You know, one is the transformation at the level of individual. The other is transformation at the level of collectivity transformation at the level of collectivity. So if we look at this transformation at the level of individual, our program of action would be to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at all levels of our being, right? starting from individual to family, to society, to nature and existence. And this is what we have been doing you know, all through. And if you look at some details of this, you know, the first step is the self-exploration. So through the process of self-exploration, we have to understand the harmony. Right. So we have to verify the proposals on our own right, and this will lead to understanding of harmony of coexistence. With this understanding of harmony and coexistence, we have to have the feeling and thought of harmony and then ensure this behavior, you know, this harmonious behavior, work and participation in the larger order. So this is the first step for ensuring this personal transformation. And in order to do this, we have to understand what is our natural acceptance? What is it that we really want to be? What is our basic intention? This we have to discover. And as we said that this is already there in each one of us is something invariant, something uncorrupted. We only have to start paying attention to it. Once we understand this, once we are able to see our natural acceptance, then we have to start, you know, being aware of whatever, you know, desire, thought and expectation we have, whatever is our status in terms of our imagination. And then we have to work to evaluate this imagination, this desire, thought and expectation and see whether it is in line with this natural acceptance or it is not in line with this natural acceptance. Right. And if it is in line with natural acceptance, we would certainly like to continue with it because that leads to harmony and happiness. But if it is not in line with natural acceptance, then I will try to, you know, update it modify it, correct it. Right. Can we move to the next slide, Rajivji? Can we move to the next slide? Yeah, next. Yeah, next, next. Next, Rajivji. So the second part is the self-awareness. I mean, first part is the self So self-exploration is the first part that we have to do. Then we have to be aware of our own self. You know, that is our state of the uh, imagination, our desire, thought and expectation. And we have to evaluate. And then we have to set it right. If it is already in line with our natural acceptance, fine. If it is not in line with our natural acceptance, we have to update it. Right. So this purification of sanskars is what we have to do through self-awareness and through self-evaluation. 
So be aware of your desire, thought, and expectation every moment. Right? If it is in line with our natural acceptance, we go with it. Otherwise, we set it right. So through these three steps, steps of self-exploration, self-awareness, and self-evaluation, we can ensure this transformation at the individual level. Right? We can update our sanskar in accordance with our natural acceptance. And if you look at this exercise one and two that we have been talking about, right, we are essentially trying to understand ourselves, starting from being aware of ourselves, our desire, thought, and expectation, then evaluating them on the basis of our natural acceptance, and ultimately purifying this sanskar, updating this sanskar in line with the <coughs> with our natural acceptance, which is for relationship, harmony, and coexistence. In fact, if you look at this, the course on uh, understanding this human being comprehensively, this is the course on uh, what we call as ESV3 now, you know. In that whole course, we are trying to understand the self, the body, the coexistence of the self and body, that is understanding the human being, and then understanding the whole existence and trying to find out what is our role as human being in this existence, in this nature. So the whole course is devoted to that details. And as a part of that course, we are also working on this exercise one and two, where we are trying to understand, you know, explore into the self in more detail, right? And the interaction between the self and the body. So particularly this exercise one, which is observing the self by the self, we are trying to ensure this self-exploration, the self-awareness, and the self-evaluation, ultimately leading to self-evolution, evolution of the self from deluded self to realized self. So this is the part one of our program of action, which is at the level of individual. The second part of this program of action would be what we do at the level of collectivity, at the level of society. And if you look at this, you know, what we do at the level of society, we have worked on this quite extensively in this course, you know, on vision for undivided society and universal human order. We have worked on it in quite extensive, this thing, and you can refer to it. But in a sense, what we are doing at the level of collectivity is to start with this education of the people, particularly the teachers, the parents, the policy makers. Okay. And if we can do this, we can take it to the mainstream education. Okay. So working for education and sanskar you know, of the children. And if we have people who are having this right education and sanskar and who can live with human conduct, then we can work for undivided society and universal human order. So these are the broad three steps. So we have been working with the teachers, with the parents, with the policy makers. Once they can see the meaning in it, the relevance of it, we can work to bring in, in the mainstream education. And if we are working with this mainstream education, and if we have people, you know, the teachers, the students, the families, who are living, we have understood this, and who are living with human conduct, then we can think in terms of the human constitution in terms of the human society and universal human order. And that is what we have been trying to do. And we have been able to make some significant, you know, move, uh, kind of uh, 
progress in the first two and now it is time to start working for the step 3 as well but yes a significant amount of work is being done in step 1 and step 2 <clears throat> yes we are just briefly you know recalling what uh, uh, we have been discussing you know in detail yes so this is our program of action at the level of collectivity at the level of society and in terms of time we have been saying you know that if one person can help 10 people to understand it and if you go by step 1 it might take something like 100 years which is fine which is fine for a civilizational change 100 years is a reasonable time but if you can go through this process of mainstream education then probably two three generations things can change so 20 to 50 years of time would be you know good enough and if you can bring it you know at the level of society you know, we start working at the level of society and the level of system okay, then probably this transformation can take place in a still shorter time you know from 10 to 20 years but what we have been saying is that even if it takes 100 years one century it is good enough because for a civilization this 100 year is not very you know long time because thousands of years this civilizations you know survive so if you can work for this transformation and in 100 years something meaningful transformation can take place at the level of society it is worth yes but these are just the estimates just to get a feel of how it will look like in terms of in time frame yes बढ़िया तब आप लोग का क्वेश्चन हमने भी आ सकता है